आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स यू आर लिसनिंग टू ईबीसी रेडियो 1170 एम आपकी चॉइस एंड आई एम योर होस्ट अलका एंड दिस इज द शो कॉल्ड कैंसर एजुकेशन सीरीज एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक रॉबर्ट वुड जॉनसन बानपस हेल्थ एंड रदगज कैंसर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ न्यू जर्सी फॉर सपोर्टिंग दिस कैंसर एजुकेशन सीरीज एज यू नो कैंसर हैज बिकम सो कॉमन एंड ईबीसी रेडियो ऑलवेज बिलीव हेल्थ इज वेल्थ and we always want to educate you as much possible so that's why ebc radio brings these doctors and specialists to educate you today in our cancer education series we are going to be talking to mansi shah and she is a hematologist oncologist at rutgers cancer institute of new jersey which together with robert wood johnson barnabas health is the state's only national cancer institute designated comprehensive cancer center she is also an assistant assistant professor of medicine division of blood disorders at rutgers robert wood johnson medical school dr shah received her undergraduate degree from new york university which is nyu and her medical degree from robert wood johnson medical school she completed an internal medicine internship and residency at thomas jefferson university hospital in philadelphia and returned to new jersey to complete a fellowship in hematology and medical oncology at rutgers cancer institute of new jersey dr shah's practice focuses on blood cancers specifically plasma cell disorders she actively participates in clinical research with a focus on using immunotherapy which harnesses the power of the immune system against malignancies wow dr what a great work you are doing and i know the cancer word is so scary word before that i would like to welcome you on ebc radio how are you doing Thank you so much for that introduction Alka. I'm doing really well and I'm really honored to be here today as part of the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey and Barnabas Health. Well, it's a privilege and honor to have you here today and uh, your knowledge is going to be very very valuable which is going to be educating our New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, South Asian community listeners, you know. Absolutely and I I do want to start by saying Eid Mubarak to those who celebrate today. Yes, Eid Mubarak it today is Eid the uh, ABC radio had been celebrating all day Eid. <laughs> <laughs> so Absolutely. Yeah, let's get on educating our uh, you know our community. So what are some common blood cancers uh, and what are some of the symptoms? So blood cancer is a type of cancer that affects the production and function of blood cells that are typically produced in the bone marrow in the lymphatic system. There's three main types of blood cancers and these are leukemia, lymphoma and multiple myeloma. Some of the symptoms that occur due to blood cancer include fatigue, inability to exercise or perform activities to your normal level night sweats that are recurrent fevers that are also recurrent unintentional weight loss um sometimes because it's a blood cancer people can have easy bruising or bleeding and also frequent infections to better really understand the blood cancers i'd like to use an analogy of a garden so i'd right really like to think of the bone marrow as a garden with different types of cells including white blood cells that help us fight infections red blood cells that are also known as hemoglobin but carry oxygen around to your organs and also provide nutrients and platelets these help us clot when there is a wound or bleeding there's a tiny subset of cells called plasma cells which are responsible for producing antibodies and help us ward off infections through our immune system. And so the different types of blood cancers affect different lines of therapy. So the white blood cells if they're affected are typically in the leukemia, the lymphatic system or the immune system is affected by lymphoma, and if there's something wrong with the plasma cells, it's multiple myeloma. And I like to equate the cancers as a weed in that garden. 
of your cells. That's not necessarily following any instructions. It's growing out of proportion to the space that's available, competing with the other blood cells for the ingredients and the nutrients that are needed to grow. And if left unchecked, those weeds can outgrow that garden and destroy it. And and if if I think of blood cancers in that way, I can understand some of the symptoms that it can cause. Mm-hmm. Well, very nicely you have put together, you know, the sam- example what you gave as a garden. It is very simple to understand uh, what are the roles of different kind of uh, blood cells in the body, right? So Absolutely. It's, yeah, go ahead. So now how are blood cancers usually diagnosed? Because blood is everywhere, mm-hmm. it's uh, diagnosed using blood tests, sometimes urine studies, and also imaging with CT scans or a PET scan. But the confer- confirmation is really found based on a biopsy, whether it's a bone marrow biopsy really getting to the source of the cancer or a biopsy of a lymph node that's grown abnormally. Okay. So now, as you just said, doctor, that the cancer can be diagnosed with the blood test, right? So usually, as a general person, we all go for an annual test to see our physician and we do give a blood, right, and get the blood test done. Mm -hmm. So is it common to find over there if somebody is uh, having a cancer or uh, it it has to be like a prescribed or special test with your blood? That's a really good question. Often doctors or providers put together everything that a person is saying. Even if someone is going in for a routine visit, you might be asked about certain symptoms as a way of screening about the cancers and also about medications you might be taking, your family history, and exposures to certain chemicals and toxins. And That clues doctors in to what kind of test should be ordered in addition to the regular test, blood test. And often, things like multiple myeloma are diagnosed by a primary care physician on routine testing. Mm -hmm. So it is not commonly uh, tested as uh, what we usually do, but if the doctor has seen the history or some symptoms, then they will uh, add on to that test, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So now, Doctor, we are friends. We are talking to Dr. Mansi Shah. She's a hematologist and oncologist. So now, Doctor, can you talk a little about the treatments for these diseases, including clinical trials, CART cell therapy, and blood and marrow transplantation? Absolutely. So there's a variety of treatments available for blood cancers. And more and more, they're individualized to a person's type of cancer. And some of the genetic mutations that are found in the DNA of the cancer cells. So there's a spectrum. These can include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and more recently, immunotherapy, which, again, uses the power of someone's immune system against the cancer. And types of immunotherapy include CAR T cells, which are a type of immune cells that are re-engineered against cancers, and also bone marrow transplant, which essentially resets a person's immune system so that it can recognize and destroy the cancer. Very good. Uh, So it's really good to know that there are several different ways. I mean, science has gone Science and technology, both, I would say, has been advanced so much. Like now we can at least have hope and expectation that uh, one will survive uh, having cancer, right, uh, if it has been diagnosed Absolutely. early. Yeah. And especially in the field of blood cancers, it's really the pioneer and at, at the forefront of research in immunotherapy. And just for people to understand, people typically consider cancer treatment as chemotherapy uh, with a lot of side effects. And I like to separate the two with cancer chemotherapy and immunotherapy by explaining and using another analogy of an army. Mm -hmm. You know, the army is against the enemy and it's destroying everything in its path. And sometimes there's a lot of collateral damage. Uh, While immunotherapy is like special ops, they know 
more information and they know exactly where to go and destroy the enemy. Mm -hmm. The off-target side effects are fewer. There's less collateral damage in that sense. So that's the direction that the field is going in, Mm -hmm. and people are better able to tolerate immunotherapy in certain instances than chemotherapy. Very good. So, you know, I hope, friends, you're listening and you're taking all this valuable information from uh, Dr. Mansi Shah. And she is uh, a hematologist and oncologist. So, Dr. Mansi, can you talk about any current important research you are working on rela- relating to blood cancer? Absolutely. Okay. We are working on a lot of immunotherapy research and targeted therapy again, to provide individualized care for patients. So we are using CAR T-cell therapy in newly diagnosed cancers Mm -hmm. uh, and also using combination of what we call targeted therapy in newly diagnosed cancers and also using drugs that might be new and, Mm -hmm. and using them in a phase one studies for relapse disease. Okay. So now, why should patient be treated at an NCI-designated cancer center like Rutgers Cancer Institute and Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health? So that's an important question. And an NCI-designated cancer center like Rutgers and Barnabas Health provides access to complete care. It has state-of-the-art therapy. It also has access to a multidisciplinary team. This not just includes doctors and nurses, but also therapists, financial counselors, nutritionists, and social workers who are vital for a person with cancer in their journey. And being at an NCI-designated center allows access to clinical trials mm-hmm. that, are, that may not be available at other places mm-hmm. and new research that's ongoing in the country. Well, so everything is in one place, so people do not need to run around for different tests or different things to different places. So Exactly. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, so now how do blood cancers impact the South Asian community specifically? So the most common types of blood cancers that affect the South Asian community are Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, mm-hmm. but also multiple myeloma. And... Often, patients are diagnosed later in their stage, and that's because of certain barriers that exist um, for the South Asian community. Mm -hmm. And some of these barriers include things like language barriers or cultural differences or financial barriers. And again, being at an NCI-designated center provides ways to overcome some of these barriers and also Doing a talk like this at EBC Radio, which we really appreciate, provides awareness and education and sometimes overcomes the stigma that some of us have in in the South Asian community about talking about cancer or discussing symptoms with friends and family members. Mm, very true. Like, you know, more you talk, it's it gets lighter and, you know, you, you feel like a normal person. Otherwise, you keep it in you and... You get more depression and stress and other kind of uh, problems with that. Exactly. And just talking about it helps you. Someone else might know something about what you're experiencing Mm -hmm. and guide you in in the right direction. And there's so many counseling and uh, educational programs. I hear like so many little, little places. If you go, there are so much of uh, counseling is there where people really try to help you out with these kind of uh, problems, right? Exactly, exactly. So having financial um, counseling, again, just resources that you might not even be aware of. True. And they are available. And when somebody is facing these difficulties, they think they are the only one. But when they come out, they talk to people, they'll see so many people like them, right? Exactly, exactly. Just talking about it, being aware of it, Mm -hmm. hopefully brings attention to a cancer that might exist earlier and get treatment earlier and support that a person needs earlier. 
Well, I would like to again thank uh, our, you know, cancer education series to Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health and Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey for bringing this education, cancer education series on EBC Radio to educate our listeners. And friends, if you want more information about blood cancers and the hematologic malignancies program at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey in partnership with Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health, please visit rwjbh dot o r g forward slash beat cancer. It is rwjbh dot o r g forward slash beat cancer. So, Dr. Mansi Shah, I would like you to now tell our listeners a small tip or something how they can keep themselves healthy or if somebody is going through uh, this kind of cancer, what they should do to make themselves comfortable? Sure. It's so important to have awareness of what's going on and too small to talk to your healthcare provider about so that you can be referred in the right direction. Also, it's important to keep up with your routine visits so that their cancer screening programs can be effective. And again, we can capture cancer at an earlier stage if it does exist. Okay. And thank you so much for coming on Airwaves of EBC Radio and talking to our listeners and educating them with uh, such a valuable information. And I hope I can talk to you soon in near future. Thank you so much, Alka. It was my pleasure to be here today talking about blood cancers. And I hope our conversation was informative and helpful for your listeners. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much. Take care.